in the previous videos, we looked at the uh, how the dome can be used for power generation, which we saw as part of a Rankine uh, cycle power generation. And uh, we also saw how the same dome could be used, for example, uh, the dome of the R134A could be used in a refrigeration cycle, also known as the vapor compression refrigeration cycle. Uh, in this video, we are going to look at another different power cycle. This time, we are not going to use liquid and vapor, rather it would be gas all throughout. And so, these are called gas power cycles. And uh, we will look at one specific example of a gas power cycle, one that is used in aerospace aviation as well as in uh, uh, power production using natural gas as well as diesel. And uh, so, we will look at uh, one particular example called the Brayton cycle. And uh, we will discuss how the efficiency of the Brayton cycle depends on the operating parameters of that Brayton cycle. So, uh, we will begin uh, by uh, saying that we are discussing gas power cycles. So, as opposed to liquid and vapor being present in the working fluid, um, the gas power cycles only involve gases. Typically, they involve air. Uh, most of the time, they involve air undergoing a chemical reaction with a hydrocarbon fuel or hydrogen fuel uh, to release a lot of energy. Right? Um, however, we will not be going into the complexities of those chemical reactions, and we will be um, doing uh, some assumptions, which we will go over in a minute. Uh, but basically, uh, we will not have a two-phase region in these power cycles. They are all in the gas phase. Uh, in fact, they are far away from the dome, and they are very nearly ideal gases. So, um, these are gas power cycles. And uh, there are many gas power cycles, and uh, these gas power cycles are used in many applications, such as automobiles, in aircraft, and in uh, power production as well. So, um, there are many different cycles. So, for example, the auto cycle and the diesel cycle uh, are used in automobiles, in uh, two wheelers, in cars, and in uh, buses and trucks and in uh, diesel locomotives, as well as for stationary power generation. So, these are used very extensively and uh, uh, these are either auto cycle, which uses petrol or gasoline and diesel cycle, which uses diesel, but then uh, auto cycle uh, could also for example, use compressed natural gas. Uh, or liquefied petroleum gas LPG and uh, diesel uh, could also use other fuels like uh, blended ethanol and blended biodiesel. But uh, basically, these are called auto cycle and diesel cycle and these are used in internal combustion engines, reciprocating internal combustion engines in all of these applications. Um, then we have uh, other cycles called the Brayton cycle. which we will be discussing in detail and this is used in aviation and in uh, stationary power. So, uh, while we have cl classified the power cycles as being vapor power cycles and gas power cycles. Another way to classify engines that produce mechanical or electrical power is to also look at how the combustion process occurs. So, uh, another classification by combustion process um, one way to do it is an internal combustion engine. And the other way is to do it externally, this is an external combustion. What we saw with the Rankine power cycle was an example of the external combustion, because the combustion was external to the working fluid. 
In other words, the coal was burned in air, but coal, air, and the mixture of coal and air burned gases never actually mixed with the water, which was the working fluid. And so, therefore, there was uh, never any mixing between the two, and therefore, that was an external combustion. That is, the combustion process was external to the working fluid. And uh, in uh, all of these examples, in the auto cycle, diesel cycle, and the Britain cycle, and other cycles which involve gases, typically it is an internal combustion, which means that the gas actually involves, undergoes a chemical reaction. Uh, so, for example, if the gas is air, then air and fuel undergo a chemical reaction, and that releases a lot of energy. Right? So, uh, so, so this is internal combustion, and what we have in our motorbikes, in our cars, and as well as gas turbines are actually internal combustion engines. Further, uh, by construction, these could be uh, either um, reciprocating or rotary. And uh, typically, uh, we have uh, these uh, auto cycle and diesel cycle are uh, reciprocating cycles. That is, they have piston cylinder arrangements and they have piston uh, reciprocating inside a cylinder, which is then converted to a rotary motion later. But primarily, it is a reciprocating motion that produces you know, that produces mechanical power, right? And rotary involves uh, gas turbines typically, and this is uh, example of this is the Brayton cycle. Of course, uh, the example that we saw where coal power production uh, involves typically a steam turbine, and a steam turbine. Uh, is uh, also a rotary turbine. That is, there is a rotating part, not a reciprocating part. Right? So, uh, this is uh, another type of classification of engines by internal and external com uh, combustion. So, uh, talking about the assumptions that we need to uh, analyze gas power cycles, let us look over what those assumptions are. Right? Um, Now, it is important to note that these assumptions are not absolutely mandatory in the sense that today we have very powerful computer tools that can do away with all of these assumptions and we can do more precise calculations, more exact calculations. However, as a first cut, as an approximate uh, sizing, uh, these are invaluable because these give us some insights which are true even if these assumptions are not uh, fully valid. And so, therefore, uh, we start with these assumptions, use uh, simplified analysis to do a ballpark or an approximate design, and then we may relax some of these assumptions to do an exact design. However, uh, it is important to know what these assumptions are. So, the assumption, uh, the first assumption is that um, air uh, is the working fluid. And, uh, it behaves uh, like an ideal gas. That is, uh, as I said, uh, air and fuel are mixed, and uh, at some point in the entire uh, system, air and fuel get mixed and undergo a chemical reaction. However, the ratio of the air to the fuel is quite high. That is, typically, uh, the ratio of air uh, to the ratio of fuel, the mass flow rates of the air and fuel are typically of the order of greater than uh, 15, uh, sometimes as high as 20. So, uh, because the air flow rate is so much more per mass basis than the fuel, we can safely assume that this is a reasonable assumption. However, we can relax this assumption uh, when we do exact design, but as a first starting point, this is a very reasonable assumption uh, to assume that it is just air and we can neglect the fuel, as long as we account of course, for the energy that is released by the chemical reaction. And so, therefore, uh, because of this reason, uh, we assume that it is just air everywhere 
and also that it assume that it uh, that it behaves like an ideal gas which is also a reasonable assumption because the temperatures are reasonably high in these power cycles and the pressures are not extremely high and so therefore it is quite fair to assume that the air in these cycles behave like an ideal gas so that is the first assumption and uh, so the second one is that all processes are internally reversible and although this is a very uh, not a very reasonable assumption uh, this as i said gives us insights that are true even if this is not true so um, so we we start with these assumptions and we may later relax these assumptions while doing advanced analysis so we assume that these are internally reversible uh, the heat addition process the combustion process rather as i said uh, the combustion process in these cycles is typically internal combustion uh, however uh, because we consider the working fluid to be just air and not the fuel uh, we want to ignore the fuel for now uh, we can consider the energy released because of combustion as if it is being added to the air from outside and so therefore the combustion energy release is modeled so it is not real that nobody is heating the gas or the air from outside but we model it as if it is being heated from outside because we want to simplify things so the combustion energy release is only model so it's just a model it's not real but it's a model uh, as an external heat addition that is we assume that the whatever is the heat released due to these chemical reaction the same quantity of energy is being added as heat from outside to in and this is one of the assumptions and the fourth assumption is that the exhaust process is modeled as a simple heat rejection step in a closed cycle because these are internal combustion processes once the air undergoes combustion it is no longer usable that is the air and the fuel combine and we will have a mixture of carbon dioxide water vapor bit of carbon monoxide and uh, hydrogen as well but very few, very little quantities and some unburned fuel perhaps some unreacted oxygen and uh, some nitrogen as well but uh, we are still assuming that this is air and so this is not really usable but however if we want to consider everything as air and we want to assume that this is a closed cycle the exhaust is actually released into the atmosphere typically but if we want to assume that this is a closed cycle then we have to assume that this hypothetical air loses heat to the ambient and then is returned back to its original state where it can restart the cycle and so although in reality the air is not recycled we are modeling it as if the air is being recycled after a heat rejection step and it is equivalent and we will see when we look at an example in the breton cycle that it is really equivalent and it is a valid assumption um, so these are the four assumptions that are basic towards our understanding of simplified gas powered cycles and together these four assumptions are called the air standard assumptions and a cycle that is constructed assuming these four assumptions is also called uh, an air standard cycle so we will be confining our study to an air standard cycle and on top of this if we add a fifth assumption 
um, which is to say that the CP and the CV values are nearly constant and uh, this CP value is equal to the CP value of air at uh, 1 atmosphere and 25 degrees Celsius and uh, this CV value is also equal to the CV value of air at 1 atmosphere and 25 degrees Celsius. Um, then uh, if we assume that this CP values and CV values do not change, then uh, this air standard assumption plus the fifth assumption about the constant CP and CP values uh, are called cold air standard assumptions. And the, a cycle which is being analyzed using all of these five assumptions together, the air standard assumptions, the four air standard assumptions plus the uh, the, uh, fa the assumption that C p and C v values are constant together are called the cold air standard assumption or a cycle that is being analyzed using these assumptions uh, is called a cold air standard cycle. So, we will stop here and in the next video, we will look at the details uh, of how a Brayton cycle works and how it delivers what is needed for aviation as well as for ground based power production.